Welcome back, folks. You may know him as Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, Diddy, and Love, but now the music mogul has a new name, Defendant. He's facing a federal lawsuit, being accused of rape and physical abuse. R&B singer Cassie, better known as, well, better known as Cassie, but real name, Cassandra Ventura, uh, filed a 35-page lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs in New York. In addition to rape allegations, she claims Combs drugged and beat her during their relationship and also forced her to have sex with male prostitutes. Some other damning details in the lawsuit include Combs allegedly blew up a man's car after he learned that he was romantically interested in Cassie. Combs allegedly demanded Ms. Ventura to carry his firearm in her purse just to make her uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he is. And Combs allegedly introduced Ms. Ventura to a lifestyle of excessive alcohol and substance abuse. There's a lot to discuss and get through, so I want to bring back our next guest, Megan Cuniff. Megan is a legal affairs journalist based in California. She gained national attention for her extensive coverage of the Tory Lanez trial. Megan, thanks for joining us again. Um, I got to say, I was really surprised to see a trigger warning on the front page of the lawsuit. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like that before. Give us a sense of what all is laid out here and what really stands out to you. Yeah, you know, I'd never seen that before either, and I think that definitely had uh, the effect of drawing more more people's attention to the lawsuit. I think than maybe deterring it, deterring them from reading it. But these are some really serious allegations and some heinous allegations about uh, a relationship that r really sounds like, it, according to her, had a very dark side to it. The whole thing uh, just involved a lot of abuse on. Uh, his part and the complaint is very detailed and, and really goes into some details over the years of some specific incidents and uh, names some possible witness witnesses but then also identifies people who would clearly be witnesses to this without specifically naming them. Yeah, there is a lot in there, um, and as you said, it's very detailed. I got a chance to go through it um, after it came out, and uh, I mean, it's 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 shocking. You know, there were some questions though about timing here. Many of these allegations go back several years. Uh, reporting from New York Times points out that this case is being brought under the Adult Survivors Act. So. How does that apply here, and what does that tell us about why we are seeing this case now, years after these allegations, uh, after the alleged acts happened? Yeah, we are are seeing them put that law to use that basically allows them to file a, a sexual assault uh, allegation, a liability claim after the statute of limitations has expired. And this is something that we've seen a lot in recent years. And uh, Cassie's attorneys actually have uh, a lot of experience with that. They've done uh, a lot of cases for sexual assault survivors of Harvey Weinstein, for example, her lawyer represented some accusers of him in some uh, civil court proceedings. So they're quite experienced in what they're doing here. And this uh, law has really opened the door for claims like this. Megan, you tweeted that Cassie's lawyer is Douglas Wigdor and that he represented some of Harvey Weinstein's victims. How big of an impact do you think this make on her case against Diddy? I, I think it's just a, a, a question of who has the experience to really take on claims like this in a high profile case and then actually litigate them in court and not just be the master of the press conference. And I think this is a law firm and a lawyer that's shown they're skilled in both areas. While this was clearly a lawsuit that was timed and, and, and designed to attract a lot of public, publicity, which it obviously has, it also seems like it's something that is not just going to go away easily in court. These are attorneys who are experienced with other cases and then know the Southern District of New York, the federal court system in Manhattan where this was filed. So the idea that they're going to be able to back up their their talk with action in the courtroom, I, I, I think we're going to be seeing that. Yeah, you mentioned yourself, um, pretty high profile, high interest case. There are a lot of people familiar with Cassie's work, 
A lot of people familiar with Diddy's work. That also leaves a, a lot of opportunity for people to mislead or make mistakes in reporting. Um, case in point, one site claimed that Cassie was seeking $30 million in damages, which, as far as I can tell, is not true. You flip all the way to the back of the lawsuit and it's not there. What exactly is she seeking here? Yeah, right now, like you, I did not see a dollar amount specified in the lawsuit. And usually you wouldn't see, a, a, sometimes you see dollar amounts in there that are really uh, aren't based on anything other than just the lawyer's uh, kind of throwing a number out there that the actual damages claims will be something that will be the subject of expert testimony and perhaps pretrial litigation before we actually get there. So I would expect to see something uh, like that that they might seek at trial or try to seek in settlement. But uh, they're definitely seeking uh, restitution, not restitution, but compensation for uh, emotional distress and then probably any kind of therapy bills or anything like that that she's undergone uh, and had to undertake over the years and then future medical, medical and therapy bills too. That'll be big. We've talked about Cassie and her attorney. Have we heard anything from Diddy? Has he lawyered up already? I'm sure somebody like him um, probably has an attorney already. I mean, what have we heard from his camp? He has. He has uh, uh, Ben Brafman, who's another well-known, experienced attorney who actually uh, has experience in the Harvey Weinstein uh, saga himself, actually representing Harvey Weinstein at one point. And he and Diddy go back many years. He actually successfully represented Diddy in an assault uh, trial years ago, got him acquitted. So they have a longstanding attorney-client uh, relationship, and uh, Brafman was pretty quick to issue a statement denying all this, uh, calling the allegations uh, offensive and saying that there's no truth to it. And then also raising extortion claims against Cassie, saying that they'd been rebuffing her requests for uh, any kind of settlement over the over the last few months. So they really kind of tried to go on the on the offensive through their through their defensive. This lawsuit also mentions uh, sex trafficking. And one of the questions I have for you, how difficult would it be to prove that sex trafficking actually took place here, given that, as we said before, a lot of the alleged uh, actions took place years and years ago? Right. If this does actually go to a jury in a, in a civil case, uh, hopefully ideally for the plaintiffs, for Cassie's attorneys, they would have some kind of witnesses who could corroborate what she's saying. Because to have uh, just her saying this would be uh, one thing, but to, if there's somebody in there, if there's somebody in these incidents that they could call to the stand to corroborate that stuff, or at least get a deposition from a uh, pretrial that could maybe spur uh, some kind of settlement that's more to her liking, perhaps that would that would change things. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of us are watching your reporting um, to see what happens next. And since we have you here, we're curious to know what is going to come next in this case. I mean, what can we expect going forward? Uh, right now, I wouldn't expect any big action for a while. The, the next step, of mm -hmm. course, is for uh, Diddy to... Uh, respond to this lawsuit. They're going to be uh, summons to court and actually served with the case. And then his uh, his lawyer, Ben Brafman, or his team, maybe somebody else, will do a notice of appearance. And then the first big step for them will be to file an answer to the complaint, which will go through each factual allegation and deny in part or uh, admit in part. And that will set the uh, set the litigation in place and uh, it kind of depends on who who the judge the federal judge in Manhattan that gets assigned the case just the way he or she runs 
uh, their courtroom, whether they set a status conference and we start to see some pretrial litigation early next year. But I think definitely through the end of the year, we're not going to be seeing anything substantive. That's uh, the big advantage that plaintiffs have uh, in kind of the public relations game when they file these is the filing of the lawsuit is huge news. And then there's not really anything else for a while. So the filing of the lawsuit dominates the headlines. And then it really could be a while before we see anything too substantive after that. Yeah, it's good to set these expectations so folks know what's going to happen going forward. Legal affairs journalist Megan Cunif, thank you again for joining us. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for having me.